everybody, Martin here. So I'm doing the last video for the Maverick, uh, the Maverick series. Unfortunately, I had a bit of a mishap with the audio and it messed up uh, completely. So that was when I was doing the, the the commentary for the match five. So what I've done is I Magic Online lets you uh, play out, replay, re replay your, your matches. So I'm doing that. So it's sort of after the fact. So that's a bit disappointing because I, it was a very exciting. Uh, it turned out to be, ended up being quite exciting. We, like, when the match was over, my timer was on 28 seconds and their timer was on 1 minute and 7 seconds. So very nerve wracking. Um, anyway, so. I'm just gonna click through here and show you what happened. So I won the die roll and I kept this hand. I was a little bit worried about keeping it because like if they have an answer for death right or if they don't fetch or if they don't have a land that we can wasteland then on our second turn we won't have access to green mana and that's actually just like our entire hand. But this hand promises a lot if we do find like a green source, some way or death right to rise or whatever. So I decide to play out death right. And they go volcanic into top. So immediately I'm thinking miracles or storm, probably miracles, and them leading on volcanic. Like miracles always wants to lead on basic, so that volcanic is going to get blown up by my wasteland for sure. It could be them baiting wasteland if their hand is like volcanic, tundra, tundra, fetch land, top. And not baiting of wasteland, but then volcanic is like fine for them to have wasted. But I still think it's, it's the right play. And we still we get to play out civil library after this. Um, we could also zenith for one or play out the ooze, but Sylvan is just like complete bomb against miracles it's a bomb against a lot of decks it's really good but as it turned out they had a force for it and they pitched force but I I like where this is like this being miracles I like where we are right now and they play out another non basic and so so we draw a knight here. So we could either go for play out our bayou and then um, play knight, exile our wasteland that shrinks our, our knight actually, makes it a 2 2 instead of a 3 3. Or we could do like tap, get the wasteland out, and then green zones for 2 and get Gaddock Teague. Gaddock Teague just eats a plow though, but and I really like getting the knight because they're showing us a lot of vulnerability to wasteland playing out these non-basics so I think that's what I ended up doing yeah yeah they don't and they don't have the plow from memory and they also don't find a terminus here at this point by the way I got I lost my my connection and was had trouble rebooting the computer and stuff so I actually lost like seven minutes on the clock which meant when I got back I'll see this in a moment I think if yeah it jumps I lost five minutes and my clock my timer was at 22 and now it's at 17 but through the magic of replays we don't have to sit and wait on that so they found an island and a second top uh, all right so here plow is not the strongest here what we do is like we wasteland their tundra and, and then we grab a, a zenith uh sorry a teak from the zenith which is that really puts them to the test then they have to first find another white source then a plowshares for the zenith for the teak and then they can terminus and before then we just like we get to just beat them senseless with the, the knight and draining them with death right so we activate the knight to get a wasteland tapping the scrubland first then we waste their tundra and 
we play out. Oh, no. Come on, stop, stop, stop. Stupid thing. Sorry, just messed up here a bit. Yeah, basically we um, we did what I was saying. We got Teague, they didn't counter it, and they found a second island and passed the turn. And here we attack, and we attack with Teague, even though we're attacking into double, like into Snapcaster mana, because we have the plowshares. And they forced Pitching Force before, and they didn't have a force for the Zenith for Teague, so I'm pretty feeling pretty safe that they don't have a force now. So we just plow their, their Snapcaster if they have one. And but we could also not attack with Teague. That's definitely like a thing. But they end up doing that. They do end up having the Snapcaster, but we plow it. And we just get in there, swing them down to fifteen. We drain them to thirteen on our next turn. They spin their top in the upkeep. Oops. Okay, they brainstorm digging for land, but they don't find one. And here we exile the brainstorm with our death right over their force because brainstorm is um can be snapcastered and we don't want to like get got on a death right activation later on, missing out on the damage and having them get to brainstorm, so there's that. And here it's safe for us to attack through the with the Teague uh, because they're tapped out. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it now that we don't have removal. And I think I end up cracking the Horizon Canopy before damage just to get in like an extra damage and draw a card. Strictly speaking, it's not really shortening the clock, but they might like get down a block or at some point like the extra damage might matter. So here, like, we're beating them pretty comfortably because they're just, like, mana screwed. And even though, like, a lot of the time, Miracles can just fetch out all their basics and get a really solid mana base going, they do play, like, a bit of a wobbly mana base with, uh, because of the Volcanics also. Um, and you can, like, randomly be able to get them that way. It's not a reliable thing against them, I don't think. Okay, and they find a, a fetch land. So, do they have the plow? Anyway, we drain them down to four. And we get a stone forge. And I think they're just dead now because at most they can answer one of our two attackers. And so, at, let's say they enter the knight, then we still get in for two with Teague, and we dra we drain our own plowshares uh, to get them uh, to lethal. So we attack with both, and they look with top. I don't think they find anything. Yeah, we get them. So like. My sideboarding is uh, unfortunately lost here uh, due to that not being part of the replay, but I brought in two Pithing Needle and two Choke, and I brought out um, I brought out two Source of Plowshares, leaving in one, and then one Stoneforge Mystic and the Gite, leaving in another Stoneforge Mystic and the Sword of Fire and Ice. So, yeah, so that was game one. Let's go to game two. All right, so game two, we get this hand. We keep it. It's not like it's 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 pretty it's pretty solid. Like we have three sort of threats here that they kind of have to have answers for. But like only the Sylvan Library is really super strong early in the game. Again, they open on a non-basic, and they ponder and. You can't see it here, but they shuffled on that ponder. And I top deck a wasteland, and I can't really uh, help the temptation to try and get them. Hope that they that we can manage screw them, and we kind of 
get to do that like they only have the planes and we don't have a one drop so we just yeah, fetch go another planes I don't think double planes is that common in a lot of miracles lists or at least ponder miracles okay so we play out a Thalia and here I get the forest. I kind of wish I had played out the heath to get the planes because I, I remember I was a bit worried about Blood Moon. But that was a bit of a just tiny misplay because Miracles can run Blood Moon and it, it kind of wrecks us. But they have a plow for our first Thalia. We don't mind that terribly. But then they have the Krakus, so like we won't be playing out Thalia for a while. And they have Rest in Peace. Okay, so Rest in Peace kind of is a jerk to our knights, but yeah, whatever. We play out the Sylvan, I think, and I think they have, oh no, they didn't have Force. Then we play out Mother, and I'm happy to just sit on the, the pair of knights. They have a, a wear tear for our Sylvan, so that's a shame. I think actually Rest in Peace, I mean, it is neat that it kind of neuters the knights but it also completely like turns off an entire dimension of their deck with the snapcaster mages which i think is like a super strong part of the miracles deck so another plow that's the second plow of the game we get a courser which is i guess kind of neat Let's see see what we see the top card of our library is Cradle, but we can't play it because we already made a land drop. They look with their top. I'm not at this point sure if I actually want the Cradle or not. So, because I can fetch. And they have another plow, so that's like the third plow. Luckily for us, there aren't. And the rest in peace means they won't get to snap them back. Ultimately, I decide that I don't want the cradle, so I fetch to get the plane some sort of blood moon proof. And lo, lo and behold, I draw the cradle. So I just, I just jam like a knight here. They're not in two cards in hand. They still haven't found like a blue mana. And I'm thinking I can like knight next turn start to wasteland them really get them and play out Thalia so like knighting activating knight sacrificing the savannah get a wasteland take out Caracas play out Thalia that really puts them to the test still still lose to like uh, terminus but but then they play out a needle on our knight so that kind of shuts that off So I play out the mother and needle on knight kind of makes me feel like maybe I just play out the second knight, although I don't want to overcommit and like play into the hands of a terminus, so I don't do that yet. And what I mean by like the needle on knight making me want to play out the second knight is just like I don't know, get, get the beats going. I'm not really sure there's much logic in that, really. Actually, okay, so now they're sitting pretty sweet on their mana all of a sudden, and they have a Jace. And Jace, they plus Jace, and they leave the card on top. So at this point, I'm feeling kind of bad. And it is another Mother Runes. So I attack the Jace down at 3. And at this point, I decide to play out the second knight because now it's a question of getting rid of Jace, if at all possible. They can't just have this Jace run rampant. We could play out the second mother, but yeah, I'm not sure if I should have done that. Oh, excuse me. They brainstorm, which means I'm thinking here they are going to find a terminus. They're down to they have 42 cards left in their library. They've been, uh, they haven't been topping, but now they have brainstorm. Or they have been topping actually, because they 
have top up until last turn. And now they have Caterell's top. But no cards in hand, and if they have Terminus here, I think we just lose. But turns out they don't actually, so we just get to kill the Jace. And we have Mother up to protect against if they find their fourth plowshares or whatever. Or if they like uh, flash in the Snapcaster. But they don't. Jace just eats it. At this point in time, both of our clocks, as you can see, are down to below 10 minutes. I'm feeling pretty happy that they have t like spent more time than us, depend like considering that we had a five minute uh, disconnect. But they find a second Jace, which is kind of scary. But now they're really desperate to find the terminus, so they're they're um, Fate sealing themselves with Jace, putting a card on the bottom. And here I'm thinking, all right, if you don't, like, you obviously didn't have Terminus last turn. So, unless Terminus was like one of the two cards down that you get to see now, we just get to kill Jace number two. And I'm thinking here, I could play out the Sylvan Library, because if they have found Terminus, then, like, if they then top to rearrange a two drop to counter. Sylvan with their counterbalance, then they can't rearrange back because they only have one white mana, and that's the, that would be last their last mana. They can't rearrange Terminus back on top. Ultimately, I really want the Sylvan though, so I end up just attacking Jace and hanging on to the Sylvan, and I attack with Mother too because getting Jace off the table is like super important. So like we lose to a, a bunch, well, we don't lose, but like. If they had Snapcaster on top, they could have drawn that, played it, block one of their the creatures, save Jace. Or like they could find the Terminus, which I'm guessing they don't since they rearrange with top once more. So yeah, Jace, second Jace down. That's not that common that you get to do that. I think most of the time Jace would run away with the game. So. They are topping, and we draw Thalia, she's just a dud because of the Caracas. Now we leave Mother back, get in there. So they top and they just cannot find that terminus. They're brainstorming. They find a fetch land. I'm thinking that you have to find the terminus, obviously. They find a council judgment, and I'm also kind of happy about this because at this point I'm thinking, like if we can somehow leave like a wasteland for the Caracas, then T is just like hard lock with mom. Um, so. They vote for a knight, and yeah, we can't really do anything about that. So we draw a zenith, and we zenith for Kasali Pride Mage. Could zenith for Teague, only if for the Caracas. We make zenith x3, that's convert mana cost 4. It was either 4 or 5 for me. 6, and it gets countered if they find a terminus. Five, it gets countered with Force of Will, which we haven't seen at all from them this game. They might have boarded all of them out, but I'm not sure. I think they might keep two or something. But we've already seen two Jaces, and I don't think they have any other four drops. They might have a third Jace, but X League equals three means Kronor Man costs four. So that was what I thought had the highest chance of success. And we get a Pride Mage, and I think initially we just make, make it work uh, over time on the Exalted Triggers just to get the beats in and then next turn attack as well it's like we're not in a rush and it's not com completely obvious what I take here I think it's 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 between like the needle and the counterbalance with rest in peace being like a distant third so we get in there they're down to nine and like if they find a terminus, I think we have to take out the counterbalance with the Pride Mage because then we want to be able to play out like Sylvan Library after, well, like getting the turn back. 
possibly like the death right although death right is just a one two because of the rest in peace but yeah we swing in we draw plashers that's kind of meh and I'm thinking okay so terminus now they're gonna have 35 cards in their library you haven't seen the terminus but no they just take it unbelievable right And so let's see. They ponder. I don't actually remember. No, actually, I remember. They don't shuffle while this ponder or something. Okay, they found it. And time is becoming like both of our timers are below five minutes now. I'm feeling pretty good because I have like won the first game, but. And okay, here I actually just botch it completely. I think I have the win sewn up if I don't misplay here. I what I should do is I should play out the Crocus, but I don't. Instead I move to attack. And look what they have. Fencer, ladies and gentlemen. So what this means is like I give Vencer has a trigger. And the it targets the knight, but I give the knight pro blue. That means Venture gets to chump the other creature and bounce itself with Caracas. And since I don't want this to happen repeatedly, I what I do is I end up after they declare blockers. I give give knight pro blue. They block with Venture. Before damage, they bounce with Caracas. In response, I blow up the counterbalance and then I plow the Vencer. But if I had just played out Caracas with my own Caracas, I could have bounced Vencer before um, blockers and then they would have been dead. So that was slightly infuriating. I guess I could have also just not blown up the, like just allowed them to chump walk and then play our own Karakas next turn, but that means they still get to like bounce something, make us use Mother Runes or whatever. So that felt pretty bad. But at least we got rid of the, of the Venter. They go down to four again. But I used a lot of time on that turn and subsequently fell behind and look at this is it now? no it's not now just remember they end up finding like a terminus eventually but okay actually they find monster mentor I guess I don't really and another counterbalance okay well the thing about this is I have a 23 life from all the from all the source of flashers and I can just give knight pro white and attack through and look we find choke so Choke is just going to absolutely wreck them here. First we play out Sylvan Library. And actually also what happened was they drew with top to draw the counterbalance to play the counterbalance and get triggers. So we know that there's a one drop on top of their library. So we know that both Sylvan Library and Choke are going to stick. So that's pretty neat. That really limits what they can do with that Monastery Mentor. And so we give Knight Pro White, attack through, put them down to two life, and we have them on lethal next turn. They play the top. They look with top and then they attack. And here we activate the Sylvan. I'm getting like really edgy because of time. We get a decay, which is nice. So here I'm thinking like they have the open white mana. And if they don't have like a source of plowshares, which there is only one left of, or a terminus, then we then we just kill them. 
we give knight pro white attack through. If we decay the monk first, then we play around them finding their last horse to plowshares and just attack through. If we don't decay, just give pro white and they have terminus. Is it somehow better for us to keep the decay? We could use the decay on the top or the counterbalance. I end up choosing to play around the source of plowshares and decay the monk token, which turns out to be a pretty big sort of miscalculation because they actually have found terminus at long last. And now we're like, the timer is like really super edgy right now. We lose all our creatures. We have choke in the civil library, which are super strong. And they have top counterbalance. So civil library shows us these three. So we can zenith. We can wasteland the Caracas and Zenith for Teague. And that is like pretty sweet. At this time though, I'm getting super like anxious, super worried uh, that I won't be able to finish in time and I'll lose. So we just, we pay eight life to keep everything. We wasteland the Caracas. They look in response. I think we play out Thalia and I mess it up here. I'm I go to, to Green Zones for Teague, but I miscount with a Thalia wanting wanting to leave Caracas open, so I just make X1. At this point I have just a one minute and five seconds. They have nearly two minutes left. I'm super nervous at this point that I'm gonna lose the time, so I miss do the, the zenith. If, if I had just done the zenith for two, depending on like if they had like something to flip on top, I could have gotten Teague and that would have been that I think. As it is, I'm 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 stuck getting like a wonder up. I think I get this. I should have just gotten uh, dried arbor actually. I think because that is at least one power. But they have second terminus. I bounce Thalia. They cast terminus. I'm down to 49 seconds on the clock, and I just put back stuff here, play out Thalia. They don't have uh, a two on top, which is really lucky for me. But on the other hand, Lynn, I could play Deathrite and Mom. They flip the top, I play Thalia number two. I don't even have Cavern of Souls. I'm just so, like, so fast clicking now. 33 seconds left on the clock. I didn't, I could have played. Uh, Cavern on Human, but I, I didn't feel like I had the time. Thalia resolves. They look down to 28 seconds on the clock. They pass the turn. I attack, thinking, what do you have that last source of plowshares or terminus? I'm just anxiously wishing now I hadn't played to the library because it takes so much time on the draw step. But I get to attack in. Yay! We win. So that was like super, super nerve wracking playing that match live. I'm really upset that I didn't, that the, the audio was messed up on the original recording. So, but you got an impression of what the match was like and super exciting. I got 2 0 with this deck against Miracles, which seems very unreasonable, and 4 0 in matches in total. So that's really neat. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you soon for some more legacy videos.